to read you a scripture. And there's a reason that I'm not reading this out of the Bible tonight is because one of the ways for me now that I'm starting to move towards allowing God to renew my mind is whenever I come to a verse that means a lot to me, I'm writing it on note cards and memorizing it so it becomes a part of me. It becomes a part of my mind. It becomes a part of my heart. And I can go to it and recite it to myself at any point during the day whenever I need it. So for me right now, I haven't got it memorized yet, but by the end of the week, I will. Romans 12.2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So let's just break that down. How do we not find ourselves conforming to the way of the world? By the renewing of our minds. Then you will be able to test and approve of what God's will is, his good, pleasing, perfect will. What I, say, what I see with this is when we encounter these challenges and these temptations in the world, if we've been allowing God to renew our mind, then we will know God's will in those situations, and we will be able to follow through on God's will in those situations. If we haven't been, we're going to get it wrong. We're going to fall short. So one of the things that I'm starting to do in my life, and what I want to encourage you guys to think about too is, where is it that you're renewing your mind? And let me just name off a couple of examples. Is it on television? Or is it in scripture? Is it on Xbox? Or is it on a podcast? Or reading a book that someone else has written concerning a topic about God that maybe is important to you at the time? Is it, isn't it renewing your mind by connecting to the World Wide Web? Or is it renewing your mind by connecting to the creator of the universe through prayer? I'm going to be completely honest with you guys about something. This is a topic that for the last three and a half years I have avoided talking about. And Stephen and I both have probably avoided talking about this. And I'll tell you why. And that's because whenever we have these conversations, initially when we first started this group, it seemed like at the tables they would go to a place of guilt. And that is, I'm not reading my Bible. I'm not a good Christian. I stopped doing the devotional that somebody bought me for Christmas. I only got through the first 15 days, so I'm a horrible person. I'm going to go home and feel bad about myself. Well, basically what I've come to the conclusion was that's then and this is now. That's crap. That's a lie. It's time to move on and get past that. So tonight I want to talk about a dirty word. And some of you are saying, yeah, it's about time. <laughs> well, let's start talking about dirty words. <laughs> but the dirty word, it's a D word. No, it's not damnation. It's discipline. Tonight I want to talk about the dirty word of discipline. The one I want you to recognize is discipline is... As near as I can tell, it's only a dirty word in, relationship to our, in relation to our relationship with God. Because I look at the rest of my life, and I look at the rest of your lives, and we honor discipline. We seek discipline. We get more money for discipline. We get better results for discipline. And we recognize that in the physical world. But in the spiritual world, we look at it like it's some sort of a dirty word. Some sort of a have to, not some sort of a get to. I want you to go back to that first question that we talked about tonight that one thing that you really applied yourself to, that you spent a lot of time and a lot of effort, why did you do it? Because it brought you freedom. It brought you the freedom and the ability to do something that you would not have been able to do otherwise. The same thing is, holds true in our lives. If you look at the way we approach our health, the way we approach our hobbies, the way we approach our jobs, discipline brings freedom. Look, I can't walk out of here tonight and run 100 miles. Frank can, Jared can. I would die somewhere in the, in the middle of a trail somewhere out in the, in the darkness tonight. You guys would never see me again. Yeah, I could get four. All right, I could get four. Give me a little break here, guys. Steve, a half mile. <laughs> All right, I totally forgot what I was forgot talking about. Let's, let's get back on track, but discipline, freedom through discipline. These guys like Frank, Jared, these guys, they put in the necessary discipline to be able to have the freedom to go out and do that. And we recognize that in all areas of our lives except for our spirituality. So I want to read you one other verse. 
And this one is God talking to probably my favorite biblical character, Joshua. Joshua was the guy who took over after Moses died. Now he had some pretty big shoes to fill and he probably was freaking out thinking, how in the world am I gonna replace Moses? And God gave him a piece of advice. And I wanna break this down for you guys. It's Joshua 1.8. He didn't give him a whole lot, but this is what he told him. Do not let this book of law depart from your mouth. Now when I read that, what do I hear? This book of law is the scriptures. Do not let it depart from your mouth. Don't stop speaking it. Don't stop talking about it, right? Meditate on it day and night. Don't just talk about it, think about it. When we leave here tonight, go home, think about it. As Woody would say, go home and chew it like a, a cow, choose cud. I don't even know what that is, but that's just, that's just what Woody says. So, you know, do not let the book of law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. And get this one, guys, because this is where we drop the ball. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Don't just talk about it, don't just think about it, but have the discipline to actually apply it in your life. Okay, there's the discipline por portion of it that God commanded Joshua to do. But here's the exciting part. And here's the part that, for whatever reason, we always miss out on. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Then you will be prosperous and successful. When you speak it with your mouth, when you meditate it on your mind, and you apply it in your life, then you will be prosperous and successful. Then you will find freedom from your discipline. You know, I look back over what I told you guys in the beginning about my wife. I honestly believe, honestly know, if I had allowed God to be renewing my mind daily, that would have been completely different. I would have responded to the temptations and the challenges of an ever-changing relationship, just like an ever-changing life, in a way that was Christ-like. And I would have had the freedom to have a better relationship with my wife and to have a better marriage. Now, I'm making the necessary changes to do that, and it does involve discipline. Uh, and I hope that I never look back. But I'm doing it be out of the desire for and the promise of that God has made us is with discipline comes freedom, okay? So tonight, guys, at the tables, guilt has no place at these tables tonight. When you walk out of the parking lot and your mind starts moving, guilt has no place in your minds tonight. Guilt has no place in your lives. And the reason is, guilt is not from God, okay? We're here to learn from one another where it is that we go, how it is that we get before God and seek God in such ways that He is able to renew our minds. We're here most of all, guys, to encourage and spur one another on towards discipline so that we may experience the freedom that God has promised us through that. Okay? Questions for the night. Okay. When was the last time God revealed something to you? How did he reach you? Scripture, prayer, community, and what was your response? So, and this is kind of going back to, are you having your mind renewed by God? And if so, how, how does that look like? How is he reaching out to you? Uh, is it through scripture, prayer, community? How do you connect with God? And the second question, where in your life do you find God is currently renewing your mind? What are some tangible steps you could take this week to give him more opportunities to do so? Meeting with a brother for lunch, scripture, group devotionals, and what I mean by this, guys, is this is something that a lot of you are already doing, is get with some of your brothers and do a devotional. Alex and I used to do this, and I know a lot of you guys are already doing this, but that is uh, do a devotional, and then or read a scripture verse together, and then text back and forth what was most meaningful to you out of that. But that's been very beneficial as well. Um, podcasts, environments such as TruthWorks or encounter, Encounters, etc. All right. Here's the questions for the day. Uh, leave the religious crap in the parking lot. One, two, three, go. We got a new brother, Ryan.
Ryan put his stake down and gave his life to Christ tonight. And um, that, that's, uh, that's what we prayed for. So let's not just uh, go to God when things are going wrong. Let's go to God when things are going right and give, uh, let's give thanks. So uh, let's, let's, let's pray.